Hey, Suggers, it's your girl Risa coming at y'all this morning. Y'all see my bags under my eyes? Yeah. Yeah. And I need to go back to bed. But, you know, I'm up. I'm getting ready to take my daughter. Well, I don't know if I'm going to do it or my husband will do it. But if he say, Risa, will you take her? I'm going to take her. Um, take her to work. So, I'm going to get up. And I'm going to feed myself for a few minutes. Thought I would kill two birds with one stone. Um, so, let's get started. I hope everybody's doing well this morning. Um, I'm going to put a little moisturizer on my hair, on my ends. So, this morning, I want to start off by wishing you guys a Merry Christmas, safe trips while you're traveling, um, send y'all love, and I hope you really enjoy your Christmas. I know it's not about the presents, but we got a gift, y'all, from our, from God. And our gift is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He was a gift to us so that we could have life. He's our Savior. And in return, we can be a gift to somebody. Somebody that... It's easy to love on people that love us. But to in turn, forgive and love on somebody... That we're not quite feeling is an even bigger gift. Gift. So um, let's try that today. Everybody deserves a second chance. Everybody. God didn't say He will forgive some of our sins. He said we have been forgiven of all of our sins. Yes, he did. Now, I'm going to apologize first off if my camera began to skip and the audio part is separated from the video part. Y'all know what kind of camera I'm working with. So, that's what I need is me a camera. And um, I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to get one. We'll see how that go. So today is Christmas Eve, you guys. Yes. Yes. Um, I know I was supposed to go out and get me an outfit for Christmas. But y'all, I got some children that's sick. And ain't no way in the world I'm going to get all jazzed up and snot and boogers and throw up be all over me. Do y'all hear me? <laughs> mm -mm. So I got to find an alternative outfit. I saw this red skirt and top. And I was going to get me some red. I was going to be all red down. No. Mm -mm. Can't do that one. So we'll see y'all. So guys, what I'm putting on my hair is I put M Pro Styling Gel first. And next I put jam. So, y'all see it's still not laying down too well. <laughs> see, that's how my unrelaxed hair is. It just don't cooperate. Do y'all hear me? But anyway, so, um, this is going to be a long video. It's already four minutes in. So, I'm kissing y'all 400 times right now. <laughs> um, let's get started with the message. Um, 
The first one is your attention, please. Psalms 145, 11 through 12. There will, they will speak of the glory of your kingdom and will declare your might informing all people of your mighty acts. Psalms 145, 11 through 12. Psalms 145, 21. My mouth will declare the Lord's praise. His praise, y'all. Let every living thing praise His holy name forever and ever. Did it say only humans? Well, praise his holy name. Let every living thing praise his holy name. You have within your grasp the greatest message ever known. There is one God who loves you and forgives your sins. He saves you if you only believe in him. He saves you if you only believe in him. If you only believe in him. Mm, mm, mm. Throughout history, the bravest, most compassionate people have proclaimed God's word. Despite persecution, pressure, and terrible consequences. It was worth it because the message is true. And it transforms the life of whoever accepts it. You may be fearful of the attention God's message will bring you, but understand that you're not alone. You're part of an excellent history of people who trusted God and told others about him. So join the, bound, the boundless throne of people who proclaim God's salvation. You're truly in great company. So when we come together and we spread God's word, no matter what, we get people that come against us and, you know, say all things and treat us all kinds of ways. But we still have the victory. And that this particular one, I know is for me because um, sometimes you just, the, the negative part and the backlash from trying to do what God has asked you to do really hurts you know and that's be kind and turn the other cheek and um let him have his way meaning let him use you to be a blessing to people and it's not easy because we're used to living in the flesh and doing things our way as you can say, retaliating and all that old stuff. But you got to be of good cheer because you're in good company. Anybody's team to be on is on God's team. He's right there with you. Yes, he is. So, your attention, please. Just informing us to not get weary. Don't be afraid. So, what I'm doing, guys, in the middle, I'll explain what I'm doing. And I saw my girl Candy Poo do this hairstyle. Mine may not be exactly like hers, but I absolutely love the way she did her hair. But I'm just going to do a quick bun. Um, I've been wanting to do this. And this is some hair that I bought from Dollar Tree. I mean, not, not Dollar Tree. Dollar General for a dollar pack. And so, I'm going to use this. I had my hair on a bun yesterday. The next one is, babe, I'm making a video. Uh, hold on a minute.
Yeah. You gonna be? Mm. Go ahead. You gonna go another bathroom? Okay. All right. I twist all the way down and put a rope band on the end. And I'm not gonna wrap it yet. Ugh. So I have one already done. And I'm just gonna wrap these around my ponytail. And I'm not doing it tight because I don't like the middle of my head being super duper tight, okay? And see, I put these thick bands on. These are not just regular rubber bands. feel a hairpin somewhere. These are the little bands that I'm using. And these were a dollar from um, Family Dollar. The super thick. These are for super thick hair. Clasp free. Um, they're called pony holders. Okay, so here we go. The next one is the right step. Wisdom begins with respect for the Lord. Those who obey his orders have good understanding. He should be praised forever. He should be praised forever. Mm. Wisdom begins with respect for the Lord. Those who obey his orders have good understanding. All he does is just and good. And all his commands are trustworthy. They are forever true to be obeyed faithfully and with integrity. They are to be obeyed faithfully and with integrity integrity you never let somebody let you make you lose your integrity meaning you never um lord your standards or you drop your <clears throat> what you know is right have you ever longed to know what was going to happen in the future you may be facing a problematic situation and want to make the best choice in this matter. Or perhaps you have been given an exciting opportunity and a question and question whether moving forward is the right thing to do. God's will is not a mystery. He has a wonderful path that he wants you to follow. But you must be willing to do two things. First, ask him to reveal his plan to you. Second, be committed to obeying him, even if it means making a difficult decision. You may be tempted to move forward without him, but don't wait. But don't wait until you know his will, because he will certainly show you the right steps to take. Not only is that true for, um, hold on, let me get this right. Not only is that true but in your life period even with things that you feel like you should do um say how you should react react we must wait on god on that let him show us what needs to be done because you do not want to operate in a matter that won't be pleasing to him it is very easy to do I have been there and, and not going to say I won't go there again, but it's very easy to do because we get impatient and sometimes, you know, we have a thing on our mind that we want to be done when we want it to be done and how we want it to be done, <clears throat> but that doesn't mean that that is what God is telling us to do. Especially if it's going to be anything negative. Or if we got to hurt. Somebody to do it. 
God is the one who judges. He is the one who disciplines. And that's what we have to let him do. <clears throat> the right steps. God's will is not a mystery, as it says. He has a wonderful path that he wants you to follow. Wait until you know his will because he will certainly show you the right steps to take. We may be placed in situations in our life <clears throat> of things that we need to do or things that we may want to do and not may not quite know how to do it or may not know if we're doing the right thing. And in those moments, we have to dig deep and remember to ask God to show us the right path. You know, we sometimes we want an instant answer. But that don't mean that we're going to get an instant answer. You have to be still. You have to wait. You know, back in the day. <laughs> think about some things that we have said, y'all, or some things that we have done. You know, have you ever had your, your, your parents tell you, don't let your, what is it? Don't let your mouth write a check that your ass can't cash. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Quick to speak out. And I don't know how many people going to admit that they've done that, but I will. <laughs> don't let your mouth rather check your behind can't cash. Do y'all hear me? And if you get one of the real old school um, big mamas or, or parents, they might add a little extra to it. That little correction is something that we need. Wait on God. Because you really don't want to put your foot in your mouth. And that one is called the right step. Making the right steps. And your attention, please. How many times have God tried to get our attention and we ignore it because what he's asking to do may not be the popular thing to do. Hmm. Think about that one. I wonder how many times God has tried, has wanted to bless me and I ignored him. I don't, and I'm not talking about financially. We don't know how God want to bless or how our blessings are going to come. Wonder what, it, what he might have been trying to do or what, how he's been, you know, what he might have needed me to do and I didn't pay attention. Hmm. Attention, please. And the right step. The kingdom of God is now. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And your dominion endures throughout all generations. Psalms 145 and 13. I extolled you, extol you, my God and King. And bless your name forever and ever. Psalms 145 and 1. Heaven is usually spoken of as a faraway place. That you reach only at the end of a godly life. But God's reign over all that he created is right here in the present. In the present day. Before your eyes and under your nose. Place your trust in him and his commandments. You don't have to wait for heaven to draw near to you. Or for you to draw near to God. To experience his love and to do his will. Everything you need is available by faith and grace. God has given you the tools to know him. Scripture, prayer, communities of faith believers, acts of love, peace, and mercy. 
All of these pull you toward your true center and spiritual home with God. The foretasters of heaven are abundant if you open your hearts to see them. And the prayer for this uh, devotional. God, open my eyes to see your goodness and mercy in the midst of this life. Thank you for giving me a taste of the good things yet to come. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to um, follow the right steps. We're going we're gonna to pay attention. Follow the right steps. And knowing that the kingdom of God is now. He's going to set me free. Yes, he is. I run in the path of your commands. For you have set my heart free. Teach me, O Lord, to follow your decrees. Then I will keep them to the end. Psalms 119, 32 through 33. I have gained perfect freedom by following your teachings. Psalms 119 and 45. Have you ever yearned to be free from your responsibilities? It isn't usually for you to feel this way, especially if the task you've been doing haven't been in initiated by God. When you fail to follow God's course for your life, the activities that you were once in enjoyable <clears throat> that you once found enjoyable may become burdensome and they may feel like obligations. However, Jesus said, Take my yoke. Hmm. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Matthews 11, 29 and 30. The work he gives you to do sets you free because he takes the responsibility for your success upon himself. You are weird. You are wearied from burdens and obligations. Then trade your yoke for his. Trade your yoke for his. Do as he says, and surely you'll find freedom for your soul. Are you wearied from burdens and obligations? Are you heavy? Are you stressed? Are you aggravated? Are you depressed? Are you angry? Are you wearied? Is your body tired? Are you mentally tired, emotionally tired? Are you weary from your burdens and your obligations? Then trade your yoke for his. Do as he says. Surely you will find freedom for your soul. Father God, help me to keep in step with your plan by doing what you have given me to do. Strengthen me to do your will, my God, so I don't become weary. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. Amen. He also says we can take a break. We can take a break. Return to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with me. Psalms 116 and 7. And Joyce writes, we all need a break in the actions from time to time. Resting isn't just a good idea. It is a command of God. Six days you shall do your work. But the seventh day, you shall rest and keep the Sabbath. That your ox and your donkey may rest and the son of your bound woman. And the alien may be refreshed. Exodus 23 and 12. The Lord added that even in plowing time and, and in harvest, you shall rest on the Sabbath. Exodus 34 and 21. If the Lord tell you that even the seasons when you have to plow, and you have to harvest your crops of how or or how or harvest, period. Um, if he tells you, even during that time, you must take a day of rest. Some of us work like dogs. If we could work seven days a week, we would, and sometimes we have to. But you work like a dog, and sometimes it still seems as though you do not have enough. In those moments, remember his word. We have to take a rest. On the Sabbath, we have to rest. 
He is our provider. He is our source. And if he is our provider, knowing that on your job or all the things that you have, all of your burdens, everything that you have to do or that you have planned are on you and you feel like you don't have enough time to complete everything that you need to or that you have to, you still have to take a day of rest. Even if that means turning off the phone, unhooking the phone, whatever it may be, take a day of rest. Give yourself a chance to rest, to be refreshed and renewed. That means for one day a week, we are to withdraw from common labor and to rest. Don't work that day, even in the busy seasons. Dedicate that day to spend time with God, worshiping Him. Start your week off right by getting back to what is really important, and that's honoring God. Get back to really what's, what's important. And how do we really know how important that is? Honoring God. Do we really know how important that is? Are we really putting forth the effort to do just that? Honoring Him. We honor Him with our words, with our actions. By doing as He says. And sometimes it may seem like it's a task or that you got to make yourself do it. But the more that you do it, it began to be just a part of life. Not a routine. You're not stressed about it. You don't have to remind yourself to do it. It just becomes a part of daily life. It just becomes. It is. It not really becomes because it is now. It is. This is it. Take a break, he says. Honoring him. In spite of all the foolishness, honor him. In spite of all the things that you have on your calendar to do. All the people that you have to see. All the emails that you have to answer. Take a break. Take a break. He's not, he's really not asking you. He's telling you, <laughs> you have to take a break. This is to hold my hair down and oh uh, I got a box of relaxer somewhere y'all I just don't feel like relaxing my hair right now come on hairpins stay in there Okay. Take a break. Quality makes a difference. And I'm at 28 minutes. Quality makes a difference. John, 1 John 4 and 7. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is from God. And he who loves is begotten of God and is coming to know and understand God and recognize and get a better and clearer knowledge of him. Quality makes the difference. For love, let us love one another. For love is from God. Hmm. Sometimes we think that the busier we are, the more we're doing in the kingdom of God. But it is not how much we do. It is the quality of what we do that makes the difference. Most people will admit that they need to spend more of time, of their time developing good relationships. 
You can't be a good friend to somebody if you never put in any time into your relationship. Ask God to bring someone to mind that he would like for you to bless today. Then follow through and let that person know that God brought them to your heart. Mm, mm, mm. What a blessing that is. To know. Or to do. God said we can ask him. I don't know how many of y'all have ever done that. Not, and I don't mean in the way that you can go back and tell everybody. Oh I did this with so and so. That's not being a blessing to somebody. You do it from the kindness of your heart. With no strings attached. You don't even have to let somebody know what you did. It's just between you, God, and that person. You, God, and that person. Not for you to hold it over that person's head. No. But for you to do as God asks you to. Because he, he asks you to bless somebody. He asks you. It's saying that we can do that. We can ask him to send, send us somebody to be a blessing to. What you want me to do? Oh, you want me to come with you? Okay. Okay, guys. You walking out the door now? Okay, well, come. I, I should be through. Come get me. And I just slip my pants on. So quality makes a difference. Rest in God's law. This is my last one. And I got to hurry up and do my face while I do this. Let us therefore be zealous and exert ourselves and strive diligently to enter that rest of God, to know and experience it for ourselves, that no one may fall or perish by the same kind of unbelief and disobedience into which those in the wilderness fell. Hebrews 4 and 11. Don't work so hard that you miss your time with God. Rest is important. Rest, and it's, it's still about rest. Rest is important. Rest is important. Rest is important for your spiritual and physical life. The need for rest can't be ignored. It is a law of God. Just like the laws concerning eating, sowing, and reaping. We cannot break the principles of rest without paying the price of disobedience. You hear that? We gotta take a rest. We gotta take a rest. Paul said, <clears throat> How you say Y'all, I'm getting tongue-tied. Ephroditus, if I'm saying it right. He sent Ephroditus home, saying that he came near death through working for Christ. See Philippians 2, 25-30. But God had mercy on him and spared his life. He had mercy on him and spared his life. Find time to be still on a regular basis. It is, in, it is in moments of rest that you are most likely to hear God speak. God is thinking on our what he needs us to do. He created us. He knows that our bodies are going to need rest. Our bodies, our spirits, all of that needs rest. And just as he says... About anything else in the Bible. He gives us instruction. Not. Um, not just to put words on a page. But for us to live by. To 
help us achieve our goal to be right with him. He asks us. We are his children. He loves us. The same way we tell our kids no about some things when they want to do something. Or we send them to bed at a certain time of night. Mom, do you huh. have the flat iron? No, I don't. Okay. You looked under the, under the sink? Yes. Hold on, y'all. Why you need to flat out? You took your hair down? All you need is a curl in our ass. You need to be on you. Let's show you. No, it, it look good on you. It do. It don't hide that butt back there. Ooh. It, 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 I'm, just, I'm frustrated because this, 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 this ain't working out. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Man. Wait a minute. Hold on, y'all. I got to wrap this up. My baby need me. <clears throat> so y'all think about what I've said what God's word says and what I've just tried to share with you. I know I have been getting a lot of people come and watch lately, but that's okay. Cause maybe what is being said may not be for them that particular day. But I thank God for this day that he has made. He give us a choice, y'all. And he give us his word as a true God, as light in our lives. Mm -mm. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I love y'all. And um, to all of my sisters out there, I send y'all peace. Send you big hugs. And may this holiday season bring you much joy. This is the palette that I'm using. Yeah, the middle one is all broke. And it is Spoiled Brat by Wet n Wild.
and I'm going to use Handwritten by Matt. By Mac. Ooh, by Matt. I'm reading what it says. Matt. It's a matte finish eyeshadow. It's a beautiful color. One day I'm going to break down and go and buy me some, some MAC Cosmetics. But every time I think I'm going to... I'm not going to keep saying that, Lord. I thank you. I'm almost done. And this is the color I'm using up here. My daughter told me, said, Mama, you need to um, do something with your eyebrows because you can't see your eyebrows. I don't like my eyebrows dark. I don't. Not extremely dark anyway. So I'm going to just, because I want to be able to see that part. harsh lines I want them to look feathered stay looking natural put it that way If I can find it, I'm going to wear a more reddish color lipstick if I can find it. I know I about know where I need to go look for that in my daughter's purse. I could slap a knot on her for real. So I'm just going to use this kind of orange color. And this is by, um, who is this? It's LA Colors, but I don't know the number of it because the bottom came off. So. in this bathroom. I don't know if anybody else do that, but I would have made a real mess. And it's so easy to do. So quick. Oh, y'all. I'm all done somewhat.
come on, man. Okay, I'm finna say, don't tell me they done took my other eyeshadow mascara. So y'all, my alternative Christmas outfit, I don't know what it is going to be yet. So uh, I got one with a sore throat. With, and two, one got an upset stomach. Not quite sure what's wrong with her. But um, got to look out for the babies, y'all. This is my face of the day. And my hair of the day. And I'll be back to talk to you guys later. I love y'all. Bye, Sigma.